Is Lucian top meta? Well, maybe when he's on the enemy team. Definitely not when he's on my team. What is up, Pro Guides family? It's Kristoff here with you guys again. I'm here to run you guys through another set of Korean builds. This time for patch 10.17. We've got a ton of new builds for you guys to help you guys start winning more games. But before we get into the video, if you guys lost your recent game, make sure to use our VOD system review on ProGuides.com. Just upload your recent replay onto ProGuides, and we're gonna challenge your coach to review it for you ASAP so that you know exactly how to win your next game. And as always, for our question of the day, what is your favorite league mini game? For me, I'm a huge fan of playing dodgeball with Mundo's Cleavers. I've been playing a ton of Mundo recently. I literally play Brain Dead Champions. I don't think he actually has a brain, so yeah. It's silly, but dodgeball with Mundo Cleavers is actually really fun with friends. I feel like it's an environment I can actually trash talk because trash talking on Summoner's Rift will get you banned, so don't do it. I'm really curious about your answers, so let me know down below. All right, so first things first, we have a build for the top lane, and this one is for Gnar. While Gnar hasn't been finding the most success, some players have been making him work with this build. It's not significantly different from what we normally see built on Gnar, but a single item can always change things up altogether. By building a Phantom Dancer, players are able to maneuver much more effectively with Gnar, and if you pair this alongside a Frozen Mallet later into the game, Gnar becomes one of the most potent 1v1 duelists and split pushers in the game. The reason for this is that Phantom Dancer's passive Spectral Waltz provides a ton of extra movement speed when near an enemy champion. Phantom Dancer already provides some bonus movement speed, which is exactly what Gnar needs to kite his opponents and maintain the distance between him and his enemies when in his mini form. For runes, you're going to be running Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. Since you're going to be building Phantom Dancer for some extra movement speed anyway, Fleet Footwork isn't as crucial and you can opt for some more damage instead. For items, build a Black Cleaver, Ninja Tabby, Phantom Dancer, Frozen Mallet, Thorn Mail, and a Spirit Visage. For all of you guys who used to say Spirit Visage, I actually used to say Visage as well until I looked it up on Google, and then when I played it on Google, it said Visage, so I just changed it to Visage. The next build is one that a small number of players have been spamming to gain LP very, very fast. Send me to battle. While this build isn't often seen in very high elo, or in other words, Grandmaster and Challenger, we're seeing it used in high diamond and low masters. I'd say for the majority of players, this build should still suffice. Hecarim has been feeling pretty strong as both a jungler and top laner since he got buffed on patch 10.16. Although he did receive a nerf on patch 10.17, we don't expect the hype to die down, especially with this one build. This, like our previous build, is a pretty normal one with one item changed out for a world of difference. Righteous Glory Hecarim charges forward and has a ton of backline access because of the incredible buff the active provides. Overall, Righteous Glory isn't a bad second item by any means either. It provides health, armor, and even cooldown reduction. All of these stats are great ones on Hecarim, and the rest of his itemization is pretty standard regardless. For runes, you're going to be running Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Biscuit Delivery, and Time Warp Tonic. For items, you're going to be building a Trinity Force, Righteous Glory, Ninja Tabby, Death Stance, Randuin's Omen, and Spirit Visage. Some of you guys might want to note that this build does go over the 40% cooldown reduction cap, but the order of items here is important. Very rarely do we ever play games that go long enough for us to build six items at the moment. In most cases, you'll probably get around to finishing up the Spectre's Cowl at most and not have enough time in the game to actually complete a sixth item. Finally, yes, believe it or not, Lucian Top is gaining an immense amount of popularity in Korea. You don't have the heart for this. While Lucian Top is nothing new, the amount it's being played at the moment is quite astounding. Lucian Top is an excellent lane bully, and even though he might not scale as well as other marksmen, he still scales very well compared to most champions in the game. Especially against less mobile opponents, Lucian is free to harass them and force them out of lane to pick up some nice advantages. In many cases, he can also outscale many top laners in terms of damage output, even if he's not the tankiest guy out there. For runes, you're going to be running Press the Attack, Overheal, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery. For items, you're going to be building a Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker's Greaves, Essence Reaver, Phantom Dancer, Black Cleaver, and Infinity Edge. 
Playing against lane bullies like Lucian is daunting for anyone, so if you actually want to know what to do against one, come join us on ProGuides.com. We'll give you the rundown on everything you need to know. We have great live classes every day from some of the best pro players. We even have a course with Doublelift himself, so if you want to play Lucian, go watch that one. All right, so we finished up the top lane builds. Check those out on the screen one last time as we head into the jungle. First up in the jungle is the revival of an older build on Nidalee. Yes, Rod of Ages is becoming a lot more popular than before. Instinct guides my steps. We've gone through several iterations of Nidalee builds, from full AP to running Athenes for some added utility, and now we've come back full circle with Rod of Ages. Rod of Ages does take some time to ramp up, but it does provide a ton of tankiness as well as plenty of AP once enough time has passed. In the current meta, it's pretty difficult not to get one shot by pretty much everyone from mid laners to top laners and even enemy junglers. Building a Rod of Ages lets you survive upfront burst damage so that you have enough time to kite opponents and then outplay them. For runes, you're going to be running Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Zombie Ward, Ravenous Hunter, Nimbus Cloak, and Water Walking. Next, for items, you're going to be building a Runic Echoes, Sorcerer's Shoes, Rod of Ages, Athenes, Lich Bane, and Zanya's Hourglass. Make sure to get that Rod of Ages right after Runic Echoes because you want to start stacking up the passive as soon as you can without sacrificing too much. Athene's Unholy Grail is still a very popular pickup because of how well Nidalee utilizes it. Next up, we have Phase Rush Kha'Zix. They will know what hate them. Which is running rampant in the jungle in Korea. The burst of movement speed makes escaping his approach almost impossible. If Kha'Zix manages to catch you off guard, he's going to be able to chase you down with the insane movement speed bonus he gets from Phase Rush. If you're isolated and caught out far away from allies and minions, then you're honestly out of luck because you're guaranteed to eat multiple isolation damage cues. Four runes, you're going to be running Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Absolute Focus, Water Walking, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter. For items, you're going to be building Warrior, Boots of Swiftness, Dusk Blade, Edge of Night, Black Cleaver, and Lord Dominic's Regard. One thing to take note of with this build is the fact that you're going to be building Boots of Swiftness. Mobility is essential with this build, as Kha'Zix already deals plenty of damage if his target is isolated. The extra movement speed and slow resistance from Boots of Swiftness ensures that even if your opponents try to slow you and get away, it'll be a futile effort. That is it for the jungle, guys. Like always, we're going to put those builds one last time on the screen as we head into the mid lane. Our first build for the mid lane is Spirit Visage Cassiopeia. Keep your enemies close and me closer. Especially against teams that are stacked with magic damage, this build can provide some well-needed tankiness. Cassiopeia heals quite a bit with her E because of its low cooldown, so building a Spirit Visage will allow you to increase that healing while also building a decent chunk of magic resistance. Cassiopeia thrives in longer fights. The longer she lives, the more damage she can deal, and of course, the more heals she can get. Alongside Conqueror, Spirit Visage will also make your opponents regret not purchasing Grievous Wounds. For runes, you're going to run Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Taste of Blood, and Ravenous Hunter. Next, for items, you're going to be building Rod of Ages, Archangel Staff, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, Spirit Visage, Zanya's Hourglass, and Void Staff. In cases where you think games will end faster, you don't need to finish the Zanya's Hourglass and sit on Seeker's Arm Guard for the armor and AP alone. Real quick, we also thought you guys would want to know what players are building with Yone. Nothing personal. We'll keep this one really short because honestly, it's quite straightforward. Essentially, you basically build the same items on him that you do on his brother Yasuo. Nevertheless, we want to inform you guys on all the builds we think you should know about, and new champions are no exception. Since Yone does double his crit like Yasuo, it goes without saying their builds would be nearly identical. For runes, you're going to be running Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Ravenous Hunter, and Taste of Blood. Next, for items, you're going to be building Berserker's Greaves, Phantom Dancer, Infinity Edge, Death Stance, Guardian Angel, and Mortal Reminder. With just two items, you'll reach 100% crit chance, and the shield from Phantom Dancer comes in clutch a lot more often than you'd believe. As a melee carry, you're going to want to focus heavily on building a ton of damage while also itemizing for some survivability, and that's where Death's Dance and Guardian Angel come in handy. You'll get a ton of resistances and also have a little bit extra life from Guardian Angel. All right, here's a wild one for you guys, though. 
Predator Galio. I never thought I would say that. Dang right, Demacia. That is right, you heard me. Not only does Predator help Galio gank for his side laners, it also gives him some more pressure during the laning phase. Regardless of whether or not he's got a jungler nearby, Galio can activate Predator for the extra movement speed to run his enemies down and catch them with his W. The cooldown is much shorter than it was earlier this season, and thus, it's a lot more reasonable to use this keystone aggressively for trades during the laning phase. Of course, what's more practical is its use in setting up ganks. Whenever a jungler comes in to help Galio out, activating Predator basically ensures that you'll get a takedown or at least burn a flash. Galio has great wave clear, so against passive opponents, you can instead use Predator to roam to side lanes for easy takedowns as well. For runes, you're gonna be running Predator, Taste of Blood, Ghost Poro, Ingenious Hunter, Nimbus Cloak, and Transcendence. For items, you're gonna be building Boots of Swiftness, Hextech Protobelt, Zhonya's Hourglass, Morella Namacon, Leandri's Torment, and a Void Staff. Boots of Swiftness is optional, but the slow resistance is very convenient to have since your main goal is to catch your opponents out and hit them with a Galio Taunt. Our final build for the mid lane is Sanguine Blade Tristana. Wanna see the fireworks? While we expected her 10.16 buffs to bring her back into the bot lane, they unfortunately didn't. So she's going to be chilling in the mid lane. This is another build we saw more around high diamond, so proceed with caution if you're planning on using it in the elite brackets or in really, really low elo. However, the good news is that one specific player actually climbed from diamond four to diamond one using this build over the past few weeks. And that is a huge jump. It might not seem like it because going from iron four to iron one or gold four to gold one is not that difficult. Going from diamond four to diamond one is very, very hard. So this build is quite successful. Even if it might not be viable in the highest levels of play, this build should be good for the vast majority of us. The reason this build works is because ranged champions benefit just as much from Sanguine Blade as melee ones. There's an amazing set of stats it provides, attack damage, attack speed, lethality, and even lifesteal. In cases where you manage to push an enemy out of lane or even pick up a solo kill, Sanguine Blade will allow Tristana to take turrets even faster. It also makes it possible for her to pressure side lanes a bit, and if the enemy team decides to force as five, it's absolutely possible for Tristana to hard commit to split pushing with the immense amount of bonus attack speed Sanguine Blade provides. For runes, you're gonna be running Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery. For items, you're gonna be building Sanguine Blade, Storm Razor, Berserker's Greaves, Rapid Fire Cannon, Mortal Reminder, and Infinity Edge. At the core of it, Sanguine Blade is a great way to adapt to the general tendencies of solo queue players. It'll make it easier for you to make solo plays and punish enemies for not practicing proper macro. All right, guys, that covers the mid lane. Let's put those builds on the screen one last time as we dive into the bot lane. The bot lane is going to be a short one this time around, since even Riot has admitted themselves that the bot lane itemization is pretty scarce. No quarter. That means no mercy, you cretins. Funnily enough though, our bot lane build isn't even for a marksman. It's actually for Swain. Once again, he's actually being picked up with a ton of traction in Korean solo queue. While Swain isn't a popular pick by any means, he's seeing a decent amount of play as a bot laner because he provides some great utility, he's tanky, and he deals a ton of damage. In cases where your top, mid, and jungle drop the ball by picking all AD, it actually might be a good idea to pick up Swain, especially if none of your other teammates are tanky either. For runes, you're gonna be running Electrocute, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Legend Tenacity. Ultimate Hunter can be traded out for Ravenous Hunter if you prefer the extra sustain, but it's definitely nice to have when possible because Swain feels significantly weaker without his ultimate. Next, for items, you're gonna be building Rod of Ages, Sorcerer Shoes, Zhonya's Hourglass, Leandri's Torment, Rylai's Crystal Scepter, and Morella Namicon. Swain's AoE damage makes building a Morellos on him extremely effective, as he'll be able to tag multiple opponents with healing reduction. All right, guys, that's it for the bot lane. Nice and simple, so check out that build on the screen one last time as we wrap up with support. First up for support is Pantheon. I know I was playing bot with a Pantheon the other day, and I kind of got upset because I was like, why is Pantheon down here anyway? He actually completely carried the game, and I was like, wow, 
This is actually pretty cool. Let this day be legend. So while you'd expect Support Pantheon to be kind of like a low elo powerhouse, multiple challenger players in Korea are actually playing Support Pantheon. Pantheon support is so strong because not only is he able to deal high damage early on, but he's also very durable. By casting his E, Pantheon can soak up a ton of damage, which especially comes in handy when trying to outplay turret dives. On the flip side, it's also a great tool for turret diving yourself, especially when empowered with his passive. Past level 6, Pantheon support can also roam to solo lanes for surprise ganks or even chaotic dives. Just like in solo lanes, Pantheon support commands a lot of respect during the laning phase as he'll stun you and deal a huge amount of damage if you misposition even slightly. For runes, you're going to be running Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Coup de Gras, Zombie Ward, and Relentless Hunter. Relentless Hunter is probably your best option in that tier because of the mobility it provides. Getting in range of enemies is vital so you can activate your stun. When you can't catch your opponents, you unfortunately won't be able to cast your W at all. For items, you're going to be building Pauldrons of White Rock, Umbral Glaive, Black Cleaver, Ninja Tabby, Gargoyle Stone Plate, and Sterex Gauge. An Umbral Glaive Rush is nice for the extra vision denial. Your opponents will have a lot less information to work with, and it'll be easier to make picks as a result. Next up for supports is Predator Thresh. What is the worth of a soul? We actually mentioned a similar build in a previous episode with Predator Blitzcrank. Of course, these two champions have a ton of similarities as they rely on hooks, and it shouldn't ever come as a surprise that they might share some builds. Running Predator makes Thresh's roams even more terrifying at the cost of some lean pressure. With jungle assistance, however, Predator can feel much stronger than other keystones as it'll allow Thresh to get really close to his opponents for even better setup with his Flay and Lantern. More movement speed also means that he'll be able to move into spots that apply much more pressure on his opponents while he winds up his hook. This build has a big trade-off as you're going to be much squishier than normal, so I'd suggest giving it a few runs in normal games before trying it in your ranked ones. For runes, you're going to be running Predator, Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, Relentless Hunter, Hextech Flesh Traption, and Biscuit Delivery. If you'd prefer to run another rune like Perfect Timing, you're free to do so, but just make sure to avoid magical footwear as you'll want to build boots as soon as you can. For items, you're going to be building Pauldrons of White Rock, Boots of Swiftness, Redemption, Knight's Vow, Shirelias, and a Gargoyle Stone Plate. Our final support build for the patch is going to be Guardian Support Scion. Your puny body is the only joke here. I'm sure this one is definitely a bit weird to hear about. How good is it really? Well, it's not that bad by any means. I'd argue that it's pretty good, but it's not super OP, unless you're really, really good at Scion. Also, it's not strong for the typical reasons we'd expect. Support Scion's laning can be very hit or miss. Landing fully charged Qs from the bush is honestly an auto win, especially in low elo. You have pretty good odds of catching enemies off guard with level one tri-bush cheese, or even hitting unsuspecting opponents at level one as well, especially because Scion isn't a popular pick in the bot lane enemies often don't expect to get hit by fully charged cues from the Fog of War. However, the biggest strength of Support Scion is his synergy with Guardian. There's a lot of potential for this pick, especially if he lanes with someone that can allow him to take some extra farm, like Senna. Guardian provides a shield for allies which scales with bonus health. As Support Scion, you'll be building a little bit of bonus health with items, but more importantly, have access to infant bonus health as a result of the passive portion of his W. Farming Siege Minions provides a juicy bonus 15 health every time, so make sure to save your Relic Shield stacks for them. For runes, you're going to be running Guardian, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. Finally, build Pauldrons of White Rock, Boots of Swiftness, Redemption, Knight's Vow, Shirelia's Reverie, and Gargoyle Stoneplate. All right, guys, that wraps up our builds for this video. So take a look at them on the screen one last time. Thank you guys so much for watching. That includes this episode of Korean Builds. I'm always excited to host for you guys. Do me a favor and click that sub button if you want to watch more videos like this, or show me a like on the video. That's always appreciated. And as always, if you guys want to get better at League of Legends, go to ProGuides.com or download our app right now, where all you have to do is just click a button and you can get your VODs reviewed by a challenger player. That is super valuable, and it's really helped me get better at the game. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, it's been Kristoff. Good luck in your next few games, and I'll see you on the Rift.